Welcome to Cut the Sith Reading Club episode 14. We're an unofficial Star Wars Reading Club for fans by fans. I'm your host, Red5, and today we will be finishing our discussion of Lost Stars by Claudia Gray with chapters 20 to 29. Alex, how are you doing today? Very excited. <laughs> Very excited. Young Steve? I'm pretty pumped. Solid ending to the story, so lots to unpack. Big Daddy Yona? I'm good. <laughs> Happy to be here. <clears throat> Right. Yeah, it's it's uh what is it Tuesday? It's a Tuesday. It is a Tuesday. It is indeed. Normally I have Wednesdays off, but because of the holiday week, I have to work tomorrow. Oh. Wait, I'm working tomorrow. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just jump right to it. Nash Wind Riders, the greatest there was, is the worst character of all thing. time. Uh, that's a funny way to say the best character. But... He's such a little bitch. Let's hear your hot take, Colin. It's not even a hot take. He is a little bitch. Listen, man, he lost everything, and he had nothing, and he latched on oh, very feverishly and very desperately. He latched on very desperately to the only thing he felt like he had, and he needed something to give him that balance and to give him that structure and that order. And it's that kind of desperation that you see at the very end of the book that's like, damn, like this gives me a taste of the First Order because like they are all desperate. They are all fanatics, zealots, who are basically like, let's do what we did before, but like worse. And that distilled was like enough to get me hyped for the First Order in The Force Awakens. Like, cause this came out like- Is he in The Force Awakens? He is not in The Force Awakens, but this book came out right before The Force Awakens came out. It was like the first Force Friday, like one of the only books at the time that went into that period between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. So like those details were really all we got in terms of like getting hype. That and like all that. the stuff I... that you would read on the back of the toys at that point. Yeah, they I didn't know that at all. This came out right before. I wish I had had a yeah, game. the Kindle version of it legitimately says Journey to the Force Awakens at the top of it. Yeah. I noticed that too with Audible. Audible and not like at the very beginning of the book, it announces it like that and it ends it uh, in the ending credits like that. But I didn't know that either. But he was a simp. <sighs> Even B, he was loyal, he was dedicated, he was honorable. Diana wanted no peace like John Cena. Okay, listen. <clears throat> Did he move a little too quickly with her? Yes. Yeah. Definitely yes. Yeah. But he's also a man, and people are flawed. All right. You gotta yeah, take you the, see the, with uh, the Chappelle show sketch. It was like the mad real world where the guys in the corner beating off while one of the dudes bangs his girlfriend. Nash is beating off in the corner while Dane is just going to town on Cyanna. Turn what they had into something cheap. I mean, he didn't even know the Thane was still alive up until that point. That's even, where... That makes it worse. <clears throat> he thought the... he killed himself, and like two minutes later, he was trying to bang the dude's ex-girlfriend. He's a complicated man. Okay. He has a lot of emotions. The man was desperate likes. for a connection. He was desperate for a connection, Colin. He's also... His whole planet blew up. Yeah. Yeah, but right think about eyes. it. He's 100% a simp because it was very obvious that Sienna was, like, not 100% sold on the Empire. And he was, like, he – it was after the thing with Thane when she was very clearly blocking his shot. And he's like, oh, you wanted to kill him more than I did. I was like, you're an idiot. You're blinded by your love for this woman that you can't even realize that she does not give a shit about the Empire anymore. And she's only in it anymore because she can't break her oath. Which, you know what? Very honorable of her. I can respect that to a degree. So but, it can be honorable for Cyanna, but it's not honorable for Nash? I never say anything about Nash. Nash, I said, was trying to bang his best friend's girlfriend. And was very clear. That, that is, I never say anything about him in the Empire. Mm -hmm. I never mentioned Alderaan or the Empire. You guys brought that up. I just said I he's... Have to listen to in, in defense of Nash Windrider, I feel like that's what you could honestly title this night's session. Um, I don't know. Like, 
he just had a lot of layers and i totally get that he was kind of a scumbag but like huge scumbag huge scumbag total scumbag i'm not denying that i just like from his perspective though like the man just needed to make a connection and i feel like when you have stuff like shared trauma you know the fact that you both saw your planet blow up the fact that you both went to go rescue Darth Vader and like bring him back to regroup with the fleet and stuff like that shared trauma is a pretty big deal like that's why Anakin was so invested in Padme they had all that shared trauma from Naboo so uh, it's just interesting to see that get re-explored but like through different characters Alex what's behind you oh this is like gingerbread house yeah, one of our friends made us a Star Wars gingerbread house. I had to ask. I wanted to make sure I got it. Love it. That's like, great. Nice. But um, I agree with you a thousand percent. I put it down in my talking points. I, I felt like this book, even for a young adult novel, really brought to the forefront, front, you know, the the side of war that you don't see in the Star Wars movies you know, the actual problems that come after all the fighting is done and, you know, these miscellaneous nameless soldiers go to bed at night. You know, all the problems that they're actually taking home with them, all the scars that, you know, to quote our dearest Kanan, you don't always see all the scars of war. And I, I think the book, truthfully, I, I take back all the mean shit I said the first uh, video we did about this book. But, um... I really fell in love with especially that aspect of it and how they were chronicling um, Cyanna and the entire time she's like, oh, listen, like she's really grasping for anything to continue to feel mm -hmm. okay to fall asleep at night. Yeah. And I, I just loved that side of this book because we, I feel like we never really see that angle of any of it in the movies. You know, it, obviously the movies are, con I think that's why not only myself, but a lot of people and everyone, I'm assuming, here loved Rogue One. Right. You know, it's actually showing the nitty gritty side of the war. You know, we're not following the force wielders. We're following the poor bastard in the X-Wing next to him that gets blown up. So I, I, I did like all of that. Brian, what do you think? Uh... Well, I mean, everybody touched on pretty much anything I was just about to say. <laughs> but uh, eh, overall, it was all right for me. <laughs> I'm not a fan of, uh, not too much of a fan of these kinds of like side stories, kind of, in, a, in the sense that... You don't like love, that's the problem. Yeah, that, that. It's, it's that. It's definitely that. It's just unnecessary. Come oh, on, man. We're all, we're all loving people here. I love you. It, it adds too much drama to it, 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 to the point where it becomes, for me, over-dramatized. -dra yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, <clears throat> the second reread, um, I was just kind of like, wow, they go really heavy into this, like, real quick. And it's like, this is a young adult book, too. I just felt like, you know they were like oh look look how intense we're getting and like you know how mature this is or whatever and i was just kind of like i to your point ryan i can kind of see how they overdid it in a couple points but yeah but other than that i enjoyed it the audiobook get better no it, it doesn't <laughs> that's a damn i'm chance. sorry it, it doesn't so we read through the whole thing like he was reading a book report Pretty much, yeah. Like he was given yeah. like one of those book reports where he's in front of the class, but really doesn't want to be there and has to read it aloud. So he's speeding right through it. It's like he it doesn't change anything. Like he doesn't change it up one little bit. Like, like you really have to be listening in carefully to get you know the the back and forth comments. It's like not like. like... But thankfully, in addition to the audio book, I also read the man. <clears throat> You, you read through all the manga? Yeah, I read through the, all the chapters of it. Nice, nice, good stuff. So I could get at least a visual of what's going on <laughs> because the audiobook wasn't doing it for me. 
much better. I think that's where I struggled the most also. I think just audiobooks in general. I, I, the last, these last chapters felt also, or at least the last, let's say six, felt like a totally different book. And I not struggled to get through it or anything, but I kept having to focus back in or rewind sections. And that just might be me with audiobooks, but yeah. I, I also thought it was just okay. It's definitely the quality of the audiobook. This one wasn't really a good audiobook. That's um, surprising too, given that like most of the Star Wars audiobooks are like really high quality and you got like Mark Thompson and I get that not every reader dope. can be Mark Thompson, but you know. But there was like no effort for um, the uh, narrator, what I'm going to call him narrator. He didn't um, do any voices or any of To that? do any voices or change it up. He read the female voices in the same voice he was talking with. And vice, yeah, and so on and so forth. Hmm. Oh, fuck that me. sounds horrible. Because then they should sounds, be talking to each other. Yeah. You can't tell which one's saying what. That's exactly why I was like, uh, are they having a conversation right now? Or is he just, he's just by himself? I'm honestly. So I, I really thought one of them was going to die. I really, really thought that, you know. Uh, they after, tried. Well, that was, <laughs> Diana yeah. definitely tried. <laughs> and especially was, at the uh, end. Endgame-ish. Friggin' Black Widow and Hawkeye just beating the shit out of each other to like. Save the other one. Yep, save the other one, basically. And then, dude. That was an intense did, final fight, too. He yeah. did everything in his power to not hit her because. <clears throat> Would have fucking killed her if he tried. But he's like, fuck it. Only way to save her life, knock her in her out. I was like, good, mm -hmm. good for you. And then in my whole head, I'm so happy that he did it at the end of the fight. The whole time in my brain, I was like, dude, stun her. Just give her, just pull out the blaster, set it to stun, give her a quick stun. See you later. Drag her over to the escape pod. I have need many, many rules. Right now. You always do something first and then apologize for it later. Knock her ass out save her life, and then just apologize for it. And then he's just like shocked Pikachu when everybody shows up with binders and is like, cool, you, you captured this officer, let's arrest her. And he's just like, wait, what? That wasn't part of the deal. We, we did it, Sayana. We saved the Battle of Jakku. Yeah, she really felt that way from a New Republic prison cell. Mm -hmm. and I, I was shocked by that. I didn't... I, I, I didn't see it coming. I looked up. Like, they haven't used these characters in anything. No. Like, the way Nash's yeah. shit ends at the end of the book, the way Cyan and Thane are talking, it, there's a lot of potential to use them in, like, a sequel or, like, a comic book or just anything else, really. Because mm -hmm. I wonder what the fuck happens, because I want to know how long her sentence is. Because he was like, if you give something up, they'll, they'll give you less time. Mm -hmm. And then, But they never mention what that is, because he's... The way he was talking was like he knew what he was going to feed her to say to them. Mm -hmm. But we never find out. So we don't know how long she serves. Because I like, I like to think because Colin's a romantic and this is a rom-com that it's 100% a rom-com. <laughs> I'm not seeing the comedy part of it. <laughs> Where's the, the comedy, comedy part? Was every time Nash hit on Cyanar and just got rejected. <laughs> Him his stupid long hair. <laughs> Or, you cut that hair, though. It's not military regulation. The funniest part of the entire thing, <clears throat> when Sienna's mom gets arrested and she's like, yeah, <laughs> mama did it, right, Empire? That was the funniest part. But I like to think she served a nice short sentence. She got out. The two of them got married, had kids, left the rebellion, and lived a nice, peaceful, quiet life. Because the two of those motherfuckers went through a lot of shit in like 18 years. Yeah. A way more shared trauma than that douchebag Nash. I mean, agreed. Okay, fair. Yeah. Nash can go ride his goddamn star cruisers or whatever he. <laughs> I really liked at the end of the book how he bullied Thane's brother. Yeah, Thane's mm -hmm. brother's such a little cunt. <laughs> and and was and just you know berated him and was like, look, Sina was just a great officer and like you wish you could be half the officer she was knowing full well that like he was fucking mean to her back on Jaluka and, and he's just like yes sir whatever you say like a total sycophant but then and, he's like, like Cody. 
but I don't know if I can trust that that was actually true because Thane is pretty deceivious. I was like, why would he lie about that story? Mm -hmm. It's like, like, who knows? He might have been making his brother look bad. Of all the poor souls we lost, that asshole lived. No problem. No big deal. Well, he wasn't important enough to be in any missions. There is life would have been in need. Even then, I always pictured him, you know, at some desk somewhere, getting blown up. He's 100% failing upwards because everyone keeps dying, so he just doesn't keep getting promotions. Yeah, and that was a really interesting point. I'm glad you brought that up. Like, the point where Cyana got the promotion and, like, was given her own Star Cruiser, and her first reaction was like, damn, these guys are in bad shape if they're doing <laughs> this to me. Mm -hmm. Like, it was just very interesting to see them trying to, like, rebuild and like regroup and try to maintain that like the galaxy was still under their control and that you know nothing had really fundamentally changed even though they'd lost in a major way a second time um i guess this book was written before battle like long before battlefront 2 so like operation cinder wasn't really discussed at this point i don't know that operation cinder was even an idea at this point but it was just interesting to see them talking about, like, you know, we're trying to regroup our forces. We're going to choose a new emperor pretty soon. And then, like, nothing. I was mm -hmm. hoping Ray Sloan showed up at the end of this book. Mm -hmm. That's my girl. Yeah. She's in everything else. Uh, but I, did, I didn't even think in my head, you know, about when this came out. But I made sure I, I wanted to jot down that I, that I like that it, the story didn't just end at the Battle of Endor. Yeah. You know, like we continued it on. And so regardless of when the book was written, it wasn't a thought yet. To me, I'm very just super happy they brought it all the way up to Operation Center. And, you know, they didn't just leave it with the original, at the end of the original trilogy. You know, we actually moved forward and we got to see a little bit of the world, the, the world building that's going on with the New Republic. So that wasn't bad. Yeah, I did like that too. And I liked that this was our first glimpse into the Battle of Jakku. And like, um, I guess that's the big crashed Star Destroyer that showed up in the desert that Ray was like speeding past. That was Cyanus Star Destroyer. That's what I thought. I liked how uh, Thane was just shitting on everyone from the original trilogy this entire book. Yeah, especially when they were talking about how like uh, General Calrissian and General Sully is like I never heard of these people. Why the fuck are they generals? <laughs> like, they like oh, oh, it must be nice to like get promoted so quick. And then every time anyone said "May the Force be with you," you could just feel his eyes rolling. You want to talk yeah. about eye rolling? Let's talk about the fact that they named a planet after the original A New Hope release date and oh, just yes. like stopped trying. They how just, do you, like, how this do you planet, pronounce that? Five two five one nine seven seven. I'm like, okay, nice. Reference. <laughs> I shouldn't realize that, but that's great. <laughs> I, I was just like, I, when I the saw first the time I read that part, I was just like, are you fucking hilarious. kidding me right now? <laughs> Tape, George. It's a trope, right? A little bit. Mm -hmm. We got to keep the same numbers and things going. Like, so there's you, homage, and then there's just, like, overkill. that. And I'm like, come on. But I interrupted you. What were you going to say? No. Um, uh, so what – all right. I'm just going to go ahead and ask. I was trying to think of an easier way to put this, but I'm going to be blunt. Who did you guys like better, Thane or Cyana? Thane. Thane, yeah. Nash Windrider. <laughs> Thane, to me, his his thinking seemed to make more sense than Cyanus. Because mm -hmm. he he did not trust the rebellion. He wasn't all like 100% gung-ho with the rebellion. It was simply, the Empire is evil. The rebellion is the lesser of two evils. Basically the same way Colin votes, the lesser of two evils. Cyana was all <clears throat> like, I understand the Empire is evil. The rebellion is also evil. I'm going to try and change the empire from the inside. Then she realized she can't change the empire from the inside because they're way too far gone. But she yeah. cannot leave them because she made this oath when she was like a child. And then she made then she made her like official oath when she got like sworn. How old is she like? 
What, how old were they in the academy? Because they're like 18 now. So was she like 13 or something when she made her oath? They'd have to be like in their 20s at this point, like early to mid-20s. Yeah, so yeah, they so. had to be 13, 14. Yeah, so however old they were at the academy, it's like, listen, I get you made an oath, but you made an oath on false promises. You can break that oath because the Empire has not held up their part of that oath, which is what Thane was trying to get across to her, but she <clears throat> She knew the Empire was bad, and she kept making excuses for why she couldn't break her oath, why she couldn't leave them, why she had to stay and do her duty to the point that her only option was, I'm going to crash this Star Destroyer into this planet and kill myself, because the, the only way I can see getting out of this without breaking my oath. I can do my duty, I can keep my oath, and I can just get rid of the Empire, and the only way is to commit suicide. And I was like, come on now. Whereas Thane was more like level-headed and logical. He was like, Empire blew up a planet. They blew up a planet once, they're probably going to do it again if they have the power to do it. Mm -hmm. So the rebellion, yeah, they're fucking terrorists and they're killing people, but they're not blowing up planets. So they're just, they're the only, the worst thing they did was they blew up the machine that blew up a planet. You don't create that star and blow up a planet, the, the rebellion doesn't blow it up. So he was like, yeah, the rebellion kills millions of people, but they killed millions of people to actually save billions. What she was trying to say the Empire was doing with the Death Star to, by blowing up Alderaan to prevent a war, the Rebellion was actually doing by blowing up the Death Star. Blowing up the Death Star actually saved billions of lives, whereas blowing up Alderaan didn't do fucking shit. It accelerated the conflict, yeah. Huh. When it brought it the completely other way. Well, uh, Vision has a line, and I forget... Um, I forget which of the Avengers movies, but he brings up a good point. Just the whole idea of them having a Death Star and them having something of that capability just invites conflict. Mm -hmm. You know, you're rolling out the red carpet for it. You're essentially going to, you know, the middle of the prison yard and saying, I have the biggest shank. <laughs> well, well, obviously, now, someone else is going to come up from behind you, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Were they working on the second Death Star before the first one got blown up, or did they start it after the first one? Because it, it does seem like it, it, it popped up like that. It, they, yeah, they, that's something I always wondered about, too. Because I, I, I don't they think said, they could... It, how long is it in between? Was it three years? It was about four years between A New Hope and Return of the Jedi. That thing looks too big to be put together in four years. Well, even the... Operation Warp Speed, maybe. Who knows? Um, no, but like, like so they have like five of those things. If Palpatine's ultimate end game in like in Rise of Skywalker was to build a fleet of mobile planet killers, um, then like it makes sense for him to try and like mass produce a second Death Star at the same time as the first one. <laughs> but. Okay, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would only make sense that you know the the idea had to start somewhere. Um. Honestly, I was very pleasantly surprised by this. Hold book. up, hold up, hold up. Was I the only one that answered the Thane or Cyana question? You you were the only one that answered it in that much detail. <laughs> I guess I guess I preferred if you if you're gonna make me choose between the two of them, I preferred Thane, but I did appreciate that Cyana didn't like defect in the way that most normally defect because I've noticed in a lot of these stories actually like, you know what Steve like in Battlefront 2 in Battlefront 2 in squadrons um you know a lot of times you go through all these narratives where you're playing as the bad guy or the bad guys Battlefront 2 maybe being the most egregious example and then it's like oh what we're doing is wrong we need to defect but Cyana stuck to her guns the whole time. And even though she hated herself and she hated what she was doing, she found a way to get through it and, um, you know, find a way to get to sleep at night. And she didn't defect. And she, even though she got neutralized by Thane and arrested and, you know, now she's going to be tried as a war criminal and whatnot, like she's still staying true to herself and she's not compromising herself in any way. So, Steve, I'm glad you brought that up because mm -hmm. actually I agree with that 100% because yeah. I went back because I had never played Battlefront. I only played the uh, Heroes vs. Villains mode Yeah, because I only yeah. really cared about playing about the characters I wanted to play with. So I never exactly. did the story. 
Mm -hmm. I went back and I watched a YouTube video. It's like three hours long. It's all like the cutscenes and shit. Mm -hmm. um, because I want to find out about Operation Cinder when they brought up a Mandalorian. Yeah. And one of the comments on the YouTube video was, this yeah. game was advertised that you got to play as an Imperial. You play as this Imperial for two and a half chapters, then she defects. And it's like, mm. yeah, it's like a half an hour into this three-hour YouTube video, she defects. And I was yeah. like, damn. It was really unsatisfying for me playing as, you know, Aiden and just being like, okay, we're just going to defect. So, like, I wanted a story like in Lost Stars where the bad guy, you know, they were complex. They weren't even evil or anything like that, but they didn't compromise and they just stayed with the Empire or the Remnant or whatever, like, through the end. Mm -hmm. Do we have many canon stories about that actually without them defecting have a straight up villain from beginning to end or not villain, but someone that's not on the side of the rebels because legends, there was a ton of them. Yeah. In legends, and there were a bunch. Mm -hmm. I can't think of any in canon where it's basically just like, yeah, you were with like the Imperial from beginning to end outside of this. But even this, this is only half a story because you got Thane for the other half. I'm just going to point out Revan. I said in oh, canon. Oh, true, yeah, yeah. He, he, is, he is canon. Yeah, his story, is it just a, just his name is at this point. <laughs> well, in his likeness. You just wait till they turn Revan into the worst character of all time, Ryan. Let's not, better not touch him. Let's not get they're, sick. Uh, they're, they're going to, but we'll see. That's why I'm hoping uh, Acolyte something like that. No, I'm honestly blanking, though, dude. I can't recall a story in recent Star Wars history where the bad guy remained the bad guy, like, well, throughout. The only thing I can think of are the Thrawn books, but I wouldn't even call it Thrawn. A, Thrawn's a bad guy in Rebels. He's not a bad guy in these books. He's more like an anti-hero. Yeah. Like, he's sort of using the Empire just as much as they're using him. Like, if you look at the way he's written in these books and the way he's written in Rebels, it's like two completely different characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With their rebels, he was like straight up like genocidal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I agree with you a thousand percent about Cyana, and that that's one of was my favorite things about her is like regardless of how antiquated the reader may view her honor system or her code, she had one. She completely stuck to it, and truthfully, she sacrificed a lot. You know, any. Uh, not many people would have sat there, thought twice, would have looked at the love of their life, and they would have been like, all right, fuck it. We're in the rebellion now. Let's go. Let's, you know, be together every day and be happy for whatever it is. And then the whole thing with her mother. I mean, not for nothing. Imperial, <clears throat> not imperial. Someone's trying to rack my mama up on, you know, some trumped up charges. I'm not standing for that, especially if I have a little bit of weight in the organization that's was, bringing the charges. Was Thane the one that mentioned that, like, he was like, June know if this is a test or not like when they tried mm -hmm. to, when they yeah he, he, he did time. bring that up to her yeah mm -hmm. well hey they did it before yeah and, and for apparently no real fucking reason no, other than because, some because the two of them are too close to each other and their devotion needed to be first to the empire and yeah. you know people are secondary Sure, which is why I have been saying from the entire time why did you put them at the same academy you should have put them at different academies so that he, they could break their spirits more. I, I don't know. There's a lot of mental gymnastics that you have to do in Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is. That's why we love it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to touch on the her. I'm just, God, I'm so in love with her. I really am. She, listen, Dane, yes, was logical. He was saying the, the smarter things, but. I can't help it, even even though I was kind of a little... I wasn't necessarily sideballed at the fact that she got arrested, but in my head, it, I had just thought, like, oh, okay, they're going to take her in, they're going to question her a little bit. They'll be like, nah, all right, you're, the girl Thane's been going on about for years. Well, all right, you know, a little slap on the wrist then to go. When he, they were like, oh, he's visiting her in prison. I was like, oh, well done. And even in prison. Like, she wasn't cold as ice, but... Shit, that girl's a G. Like so speak, speaking of talking about uh, Thane and his girl, this man 
coming back from like Jello can and just completely blurting out everything that happened when they were like, Oh yeah, we don't <laughs> actually care where you went. And then there's like, Oh, well now you told us. Yeah. Like, and, and Riken Riken was like trying so hard to be like, you know, it's all right, son. Like you really don't need to tell us. And then he's just like, well, I went to go talk to uh, my old friend who just so happens to be an Imperial officer. And then you could hear a pin drop like through the room and everyone's just like oh my god did he really just say that i liked i liked the part where riken like kind of lost his temper a little bit he was like just so you know son that there there are women in the galaxy that don't look <laughs> for the enemy <laughs> oh that's great I so it's like oh, i love riken so much but i had never found out that candy defected right i don't know that she did no. Because when they were on the comms together, Kendi purposely keeps quiet when Nash, Sienna, and uh, Thane are all like talking to each other in that like mm-hmm. that like battle. She's like, "I'm gonna keep quiet. <laughs> Not let them know that I'm here." No, she ain't getting involved in that thruple. She's like, that thruple's this already a mess. I just, uh, just wish I could have been a fly on the wall and just saw Nash, just in all of his glory. No, I can't help it. That one pilot from the finale of The Mandalorian last week, the one who was taunting Kara, reminded me a shit ton of Nash. Mm-hmm. And I'd honestly kind of half hoped, I was like, is that Nash <laughs> Windfender? <laughs> but it wasn't. And I'm so sad that it wasn't. It's probably for the better that it wasn't too, because he went out like a You should have asked Kara, like, did you lose anyone? I did, and those fuckers deserved it. <sighs> That would have been nuts. I would have loved that if it turned out to be Nash Windrider and he talked shit about his own planet to Kara. That'd be an interesting conversation. That would be. That would be, but they're not going to do that. Don <gasps> Favreau, I don't think, really likes pulling stuff from the books all that much. Well, he did bring in Cobb Vance. Because he had to, because he was written into a corner, and so he had yeah. to. <laughs> I, I, I do believe that's the only reason why, is because they wanted to use Boba Fett, and Cobb Van had the armor. So they and Lucas Story Cobb Group Van. is like, well, you gotta do this first before you can so do the, that. So he's like, the okay, only, fine. They were like, well, I want to use Boba Fett. And like, well, Boba doesn't have his armor at this point. So it's like, all right, we'll do an episode with Cobb Van and get the armor off him. And now Boba has the armor. <laughs> it's like, all right, that was fixed. Now we can do our Boba Fett series. <laughs> But I love Cobb Vance. He's my guy. I hope he's in the Boba Fett series because I want to know. Because Boba knows him. And Boba didn't take the armor back from him. And now Boba's going to be a crime lord on Tatooine. And Cobb Vance is still a marshal on, on Tatooine. Yep. So they're going to be at odds with each other, probably. Is it going to be a full-fledged <clears throat> Boba Fett show at this point? Yes. Mm-hmm. I, I have noticed because they did it in Mandalorian too, is um, in some of the some of the new medias that are coming out. There's a lot of imperial. I don't want to say sympathy going on, but they've been really honing in on the other side. You know, where we always yeah. see everything through the side of the rebellion, mm-hmm. and I did really yeah. like seeing you know this side of the imperial and actually, it, you know. To me, this book completely eliminated the black and white and turned it all gray. You know, there's good people on both sides of the war. You know, there's, as opposed to the group, the Imperials, individual Imperials, yeah, some of them have never done anything bad in their life. They've, you know. Some of them have never met Vader, Tarkin, the Emperor. Yeah, any of them. They literally just got orders from their commanding officers who are basically just like military police. Mm-hmm. Or they yeah. joined the Empire because that was just what you did after the end of the Clone War, and now that the clones were being retired, it was like, oh man, now I have an opportunity to like be a hero and make a difference in the galaxy because like the clones were like the the no, precursor to that, I guess. Yeah, and now it's like you know that that that's exactly how they get such a and amass such a huge quantity of followers is like now you have the opportunity to recruit and like. I don't know, I guess, demonstrate your loyalty and be a hero for the Empire or whatever. So it is It is very interesting to see, you know, rather than them just taking, like, the easy Saturday morning cartoon way out and just being like, these guys are the bad guys, turn your brain off, you do not need to really think about their motivation or, like, their character at all. 
like Lost Stars gave the bad guys a lot of character. And I mean, you have people in there like Piet, who in the original Empire Strikes Back, like he was just such an interesting person to watch because like you could feel him squirming under Vader's grip. Just like, oh my God, if I don't turn this around, like I'm fucked. Like just interesting seeing, you know, Piet in this book as well as like, there's so many other characters who have motivations and who have a lot of complex like baggage that they're going through. Yeah, and I agree with you a thousand percent. I just, I, I really have been loving that this whole realistic aspect that Star Wars has been throwing at us as of recently, you know, and especially as much as I love stories about force wielders and this is and that's and the other thing, you know, to me, we got a, a beautiful highlight of two characters that could have very easily remained faceless and nameless and just, you know, went into the ether like nothing. And I, I just, I like looking at the everyday person uh, in, in these scenarios as opposed to, you know, these godlike figures like, you know, Luke Skywalker or Han Solo or Vader or Palpatine, you know, like, show me the everyday guy. Show me the guy that's mopping the floor. You know, who's polishing everything on the Death Star? What's that guy doing? So I, mean, I really like a great that. show. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, let's see the everyday folks now. And I feel let's like this is a really good show. Yeah. yeah. It's like, shit, what was he running away with? You should read, if you haven't already, the From a Certain Point of View books that they've been doing for every movie. Well, I, have a I just finished that. I, I still need to finish the Empire one. I'm so behind, dude. But I have my, I have my monthly free credit on Audible. And, nice. Uh, I have everything pre-ordered and everything that we're going to be reading in the next coming months. So I'm like, oh, what did you get? Is it worth it? I love Audible. Honestly, I, so I have it, but is it worth upgrading to the premium, extra, whatever amount of money that it is? I would. Well, I mean, I do. And truthfully, I just, this book, not a great example of Star Wars audio narration. This is where I grew back a little bit in regards to Dooku Jedi Lost, which we have coming up and thinking about, all right, do I want to do Audible Plus? for this one book if this is the not that you know i know audible has plenty of good stuff out mm -hmm. there as well but uh yeah I was, I, i'm still on the fence i will say that dooku jedi lost is like very different dramatically than this book <laughs> dooku jedi lost is kind of like afro where they have a full voice cast and like they have you know the different characters doing the narration as opposed to like just having an omnipresent narrator like reading it and doing all the voices and it's really approached more like a radio drama or a radio play more than like a book. And so I found that aspect to be really, really charming and enticing when I was listening to Afra anyway. With Dooku, I just read the actual printed script in the book. So I haven't listened to the audio drama yet, but I am aware that like, that's how it was originally presented before it got printed. Yeah. Cause I was going to say, especially Dooku, uh, the, the, like you said, same thing with Afra. Dooku was the first, like, audio drama from Star Wars I listened to, and I absolutely loved it. There's a full voice cast, there's the sound effects, the whole kit and caboodle. But uh, I also agree with Colin. A part of me really kind of wishes that uh, they're going to bring some of these characters back. You know, like, is she I still really do, man. Yeah, so. They left everything so open and did nicely, yeah. and then you know, it like continued into Force Awakens, but Force Awakens is what's that like thirty years later? Mm -hmm. And these characters aren't in Force Awakens, so yeah. it's like what happened between this book and Force Awakens with these characters? Maybe they did live happily ever after, Colin. I hope the, so. The only other instance, and I was telling Colin this the other day because he was asking me, like, do these, other, do these characters ever show up again? The only other instance I can think of is like the miniatures games and the card games, like Star Wars Destiny before it got, you know, kind of discontinued by Fantasy Flight. But um, Cyanary was a character in Star Wars Destiny. And I want to say, too, in the miniature uh, X Wing miniature tabletop game, Cyana and Thane, I want to say we're both 
mm. playable characters in that too. That like you could use when building squads in X-wing. Nice. Also, you all should play X-wing if you don't already play it. It's really, really good. What's X-wing? Yeah, it's a it's it's a miniature skirmish game. So like you have tiny little models of the ships, basically like yay big. And um, you put them on the table and you and another player basically like assemble your own squadrons. It's a little bit like Warhammer 40k, but like not as much of a cost or an investment. All the ships come pre-painted and everything. It's great. And you roll dice and whatnot and you set up maneuvers. It's basically they captured the essence of dogfighting in Star Wars and turned it into a little tabletop game. And it's really, really good. I will send y'all resources and stuff if you want to learn about it after the broadcast. Yeah. Colin. Yeah, dude. (laughs) Tell us about your helmet. Um, Well, (laughs) at the moment, I'm currently uploading Instagram pictures of my helmet. I love this thing. I got this for cosplay purposes. It wasn't supposed to come till Christmas Eve. I'm glad it came today because I wasn't going to be home Christmas Eve. Are you going to get the um, the flight suit and do like Hoth, Battle of Hoth, Luke? Of course I am. Good. Good man. Are you going to get Ray's lightsaber? You need Ray's Was... lightsaber too. <laughs> you mean Anakin's, I believe. You misspoke. Mm-hmm. Great impression of me, Colin. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> because Steve feels bad because they sell it on Disney's website listed as Ray's lightsaber. I'm I'm not here for this revisionist history bullshit. It was Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber. It, Disney doesn't know what the hell they want to do with Anakin Skywalker anymore. I'm very interested to see what they do with him in Kenobi. I'm a little surprised with Kathleen Kennedy going like, yeah, this is going to be the rematch of the century. And I'm just like, are they fighting again before they meet up in A New Hope? Like, yeah, like I didn't know I wanted it, but I'm I kind of curious do. to see what they do. Yeah. Cool. If I feel they, like they fight each other with, like, fucking Battle of the Heroes playing in the background, I will lose my mind because Battle of the Heroes is my favorite piece of music. I feel like they, they have to fight because doesn't A New Hope, isn't he, like, surprised to see him? And in the Vader comic after Order 66, he's listed as one of the ones that's still alive. So I feel like they yeah. have to fight, and then he must think oh. that he dies after this fight. Mm-hmm. They must have the rematch, and he must think Obi-Wan dies at, in the rematch. I've been speculating a little bit on this with Colin, and just, I, I don't want to wait that long for Kenobi, but I'm really, really excited for Kenobi. It's I really want to see the Inquisitors, and I want to see Jason Isaacs as the Grand Inquisitor. Ooh. No, because I want to see him as Thrawn. No, he's the voice of the Grand Inquisitor, so he's the Grand Inquisitor. He should be Thrawn. And and then Thrawn's going to show up in the Ahsoka show, and it's going to be uh, Lars again. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be all the voice actors except for actually X time, which makes me really sad. <laughs> that is so such I, a damn shame. As much just as I love Rosario it. Dawson, if all the voice actors are replies of their roles except for Ashley, that'd be just so mean. I mean, Ashley Eckstein was a voiceover in episode nine, though. She got to be in an actual Star Wars movie, so. That is the only time you'll ever hear me refer to episode nine as an actual Star Wars movie. <laughs> You're not going to do it when we rewatch every single Star Wars movie? I have been. No, I'll, I'll watch one through eight. That's all right. What happened at nine? It it ends there. We don't have to talk about episode nine. Um, <laughs> what else do we want to talk about from Lost Stars? What are we missing, guys? We talked a lot about. Did we talk at all about the like actual like trial? Like they didn't really go into her like trial. They were just like, oh no, she's guilty. It was kind of an afterthought. It felt like so much of it was just the tension building up to the trial, and being like kind of trapped at home, <laughs> her old boyfriend or whatever, and like trying really really hard to push your feelings down under the surface and like just disregard all the blatant sexual tension and then like after he left it it was just abrupt Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah they kind of just leave that storyline behind and they're just like all right mom is jailed see ya yeah because she basically had to swallow her pride and be like yes Mama is guilty, and it was the right decision. 
even though she 100 percent knew her mom was fucked over well i am too the even even the the imperial i forget his name but the one that she meets with when she comes back from her leave and everything he's like uh, and you thought what of the trial exactly her commanding officer right ramadan i want to say his name was Okay, because then even as, as soon as she's like, oh, all right, yeah, my mom was guilty. The the Empire did the right thing. He's like, oh, you know, a promotion could be, you know, down the line for you. Good answer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just like, you guys suck. <laughs> I always try to lo- love the Empire a little bit, but I'm just like, God damn it. They're not all like Palpatine. Did everyone pre-order Light of the Jedi yet? I did on Audible Plus. I need to do that. Yeah, because I will that, buy the hardcover though. It comes out January fifth, but we're not reading it until the nineteenth. Do I want to get the actual hardcover, or do I want to just get the digital version on Kindle? What do you say, Colin? I'm getting the hardcover. I am getting the hardcover from Amazon. I kind of want to mm-hmm. cancel and get the Barnes and Noble one because it comes with a poster, but the Barnes and Noble Ooh. one's also gonna be like ten dollars more. Hmm. Cause like Amazon always like Amazon shit never sells for face value when they're selling books. So this book is already like decreased in value on Amazon, whereas uh Barnes and Noble will sell it from the MSRP price. So it's like, do I want to yep. pay like twenty dollars or do I want to pay like thirty dollars and get a poster? And the poster, because I got the one for the Ron Ascendancy, it's a very small, small poster. Mm-hmm. So I never I, out of the book. I think I might just stick with my Amazon pre-order because it should come on the day of release. Because I still don't know what chapters are going to read yet for it because I won't know that until I have the book in my hand. Yeah, we don't we don't know how long the book actually is. Does it have a page count in the description or no? It I think it does on Wikipedia because the review copies are already out. But I don't know if it's like going to be broken up into parts, like how New Dawn was broken up into three parts, and that just made it super easy for us. Oh. Or if I'm just going to have to go like, all right, it's this many chapters and divide it by three. All right, Amazon. Let's see. What is the page count of Light oh. of the Jedi? It is a 400-page book. Nice. My beard is so itchy. Yeah, you're... I was going to ask if it's the material of the helmet. It's uh, So the chin strap key is pushing the goatee hair up and yeah. it's making it all yeah. like... And then it's like tickling my chin is making me all itchy. The Poe Dameron one doesn't have a strap or anything like that. It just has, like, you just put it right on your head. No strap or anything like that. But also, that toy came out, like, years and years ago. And I, I, looking at the Red 5 helmet, it looks like an improvement on the Poe Dameron one. I never put the batteries in. If you put the batteries in, there's, like, battle simulations that you can switch between battle if you have it and battle pop. Yeah, and and with Poe Dameron, like you could press the little button on the side of your helmet, mm-hmm. and you could hear BB-8 going like, <laughs> like in in your ear or whatever, and like that's pretty fun. Nice. Mm-hmm. nice. But yeah, so two weeks, Dooku Jet I lost. That thing's only like seven hours long, I think. And then four oh. weeks, Light of the Jedi. Part Light one. of the Jedi. Oh, I yeah. cannot wait for the High Republic. I'm so, I'm so pumped to get to a brand new era of Star Wars that is not the Skywalker drama. So it'll be and good. Speaking of the Acolyte, that has to deal with Plagueis. I hope so. The, please, please, please. I would love that. Quick side note, uh, Jed, uh, Dooku Jedi loss is six hours, 21 minutes. Oh, yeah, see, it's not bad. Yeah, could knock that out like over a weekend or something christmas is coming up new year's the following weekend we got like two three-day weekends in a row so who plays dooku's voice i have no idea i haven't listened to the castles but i think it's online i can pull not sure but they do a very good job but the whoever does the narration for him and especially the narration for ventress ewan morton as dooku or law cassidy as ventress um (coughs) I, I have Wikipedia up right now because of yeah, course I do. Um, hmm. I'm looking something else up. Oh, 
Oh, they didn't use the dude from Clone Wars for it? No, I guess not. Oh, they do great jobs, so I'll give it to them. That is true. All right, anyone else got anything else to say before we end this shindig and meet again in two weeks because there's no more Founding Fridays until further notice? But, oh, yeah, Damn. another thing. But High Republic. You could do Force Fridays. That's, that's not, not trademark. That's definitely trademarked, by the way. That is absolutely <laughs> trademark. Disney We're, probably got it. We, uh, the Acolyte needs to be about Plagueis because that apparently is the end of the High Republic era. And it's about like 50 years before Phantom Menace. Hmm. Or be Tenebrous. You know what? You know it's 50 years before the Phantom Menace too. The China exclusive High Republic book is 50 years before the Phantom Menace. But they said this like it's not. There's no important plot points, so like the American audiences will miss out on it because it's only going to be released in China. Still kind of interesting. Still kind of miffed about that. Why yeah. they get an exclusive? It's supposed to just do it like. Chinese customs or something, I think. But I was reading because they said they're not going to translate it. But no one, you're not going to miss anything important by missing out on the book. But it is well, weird. There's a Chinese. I would. I, I mean, would that seems to that go against missing. the definition of exclusive, though. Yeah. I was going to argue we are missing out on something important. Yeah. A book. Someone will get a copy and translate it and put it up on the internet for us, and I will read that. I only took one semester of Simplified back in college, and I didn't retain any of it, so. Nice. Sorry, lads, it's not going to be me. I'm not going to be the <laughs> one to translate. I'll, I'm going to wait for someone to put that up, and I will read it. You can always ask Dr. Google. Steve's going to read the whole chronological list that that person made that Google drive of. I hate that you're right, and that I'm going to do that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so two weeks for Jedi Dooku. Dooku, Jedi Lost. There we go. And then four weeks for Light of the Jedi. So like the page, comment on the channel, subscribe to the channel, follow the Twitter, twitter.com slash cut the Sith, Instagram.com slash cut the Sith. Join the Discord. Everything's gonna be in the description. See you again in two weeks for Dooku Jedi Lost by Caravan Scott.